Okay. Okay, so today we're here talking about, let me get this out of the way here. We're here talking about uh, aviation, cybersecurity, and some of the risks and threats that are experienced today. Uh, we hope to be wrapped up uh, in under Q&A by noon. If you have to leave the afternoon, we understand. Uh, we're going to talk through uh, first Andy Jenkinson. He's a global cyber expert in DNS security from CyberSec. Uh, you want to give yourself a brief intro to everyone, Andy? Sure. Thank you, Lee. Um, pleasure to be here. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, we set up CyberSec Innovation Partners back in uh 2018 so we're about six years old and we've seen some major changes in the pki and dns space so we we enveloped that all up in internet assets the and um what we find is that these exposed positions are being exploited on a, on a regular basis which are leading to cyber attacks and cyber crime so this is our main focus which is an area that we've been cited as experts in which we're flattered and we didn't have to pay for it, which is unusual. At Gartner, <laughs> if you want to be in the top quadrant at Gartner, it costs you a lot of money. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I've worked in DNS as well. I used to be the group uh, product manager lead for Lycos Communities. So uh, back in the late 90s, uh, like Andy, I was fending off cyber attacks. Uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're, today's attacks, we're going to be focused more on aviation because we realize there's just way too much to talk about. So we might do a follow-up later to go into more depth in some other sectors. Uh, let me get this full screen. And um, so the format today, we're going to play some short news clips. Then Andy and I will discuss to it. We're trying to keep to the next step overview. We're running a few minutes behind, but we'll try to catch up so that we have more time for a QA. and a um, so the the things we're going to talk about you today. Need your screen up, Lee. Lee, you need the screen up, my friend. Oh, yeah, there's a bad show. LinkedIn profile. Okay, oh, hold on a second. Let me make sure I get the right screen. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, do you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, we got it now. Thank you. Great. Okay, so what we're uh, uh let me just move this bar. Okay, so what we have going right now, uh, we're going to talk about the Boeing Max 8 crash, which is something I published about on my blog, leenewbecker.com, way back around the time uh, the Lion Air plane crashed, and we're going to discuss that vulnerability. More recently, there was an F-35 crash from Lockheed Martin that Andy's got uh, a lot of context to provide on. Uh, there's a, a real serious issue, though, that's impacting the state of security everywhere, and it's that the providers of software and firmware updates are not securing their update channels. And now that's becoming a major issue as all types of devices are being compromised. Uh, we'll talk about the, the recent grounding of the Boeing MAX 9 by the FAA. Uh, there's emerging research that reveals that smart wrenches can have their firmware altered to lock up and require ransomware, or worse yet, to mess with the torque settings that could cause maintenance crews that are performing maintenance on aircraft and other industrial control systems to think that they're setting the bolts to the right tightness, when in fact, they may be completely loose. Um, we'll be talking about um, the historical NOTAM um, compromise, which resulted in the FAA grounding uh, Everything in the air, kind of like what happened in 9-11, and he's going to talk more about that. He has some intimate experience with that. And yet we still have problems today uh, with the FAA.gov that have not been addressed and put everyone's lives at risk, including all the crew, and pe even people on the ground um, have a risk. So we'll talk about that, and we'll wrap up with some of the immediate action steps that we think need to happen to prevent further loss of lives. Okay, so now... Um, this is a, sh a little short here. I'm going to play. But Boeing's signature new jet had concerned? a fatal flaw. Great. Yes, the search for wreckage is underway after a passenger jet with 189 people on board crashed. A Lion Air Boeing 737. And you're the brand new Boeing 737. Investigators from the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board contributed to an analysis of what led to the Lion Air crash. 
leading up to the Lion Air accident, the angle of attack probe itself was miscalibrated. The maintenance crew was not able to properly identify this miscalibration. An angle of attack sensor sent bad data to MCAS. The plane thought it was in a stall because of bad information. And as a consequence of this angle of attack data error, the MCAS activated when it really shouldn't have. Boeing signature new jet had a fatal flaw. Played Lee. Lee is recycling. The search for wreckage is underway after a passenger jet with 189 people on board crashed. A Lion Air Boeing 737. And you're the brand new Boeing Symphony. Investigators from the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board. So what led to the Lion Air crash? Leading up to the Lion Air accident, the angle of attack probe itself was miscalibrated. The maintenance crew was not able to properly identify this miscalibration. An angle of attack sensor sent bad data to MCAS. The plane thought it was in a stall because of bad information. And as a consequence of this angle of attack data error, the MCAS activated when it really shouldn't have. Okay. Sorry about playing that one twice. Uh, let's see. There we go. So the specific vulnerability. Let's see. Let me. I had a. Uh, I think my camera went off. Uh, so the specific vulnerability that happened relates to MEMS chips, which are hybrid electromechanical chips, in the. The TAC vector is one that University of Michigan researchers were talking about earlier about how by sending sonic emissions at the MEMS chip, it could cause it to temporarily malfunction or it could cause damage to it. And this could happen where the cleaning crew on the ground could go through with a device, a compromised smartphone or laptop on board uh, could be used to conduct this type of attack. Um, nearby. A nearby drone possibly could launch such as TAC or onboard attackers. Um, so I'm going to give the example of a wine glass. Uh, what happens if you match the natural frequency of a wine glass, you can crack it. And you can find out the natural frequencies of some of these MEMS chips off the FCC website. So this is a real risk. Mm -hmm. Don't try this at home. The reason this is so challenging is that the note that you have to hold has to be the glass's exact resonant frequency. We'll get to resonant frequency, but first we need to think of the glass not as something that you drink out of, but as an oscillating system. An oscillating si- I wanted to just skip here. Don't try this at home. The reason this is- So that's essentially what can happen if you match the natural frequency, it can shatter the chip and damage it. And so these chips were used to help control. Traditionally, you know, people think of cybersecurity like as defending the internet to buffer overflow attacks and attacks on software itself. No one really thought about the hardware layers that sit below the software layers. What our laboratory focuses on are those future threats. Threats against autonomous vehicles, threats against our healthcare system, threats against the Internet of Things. That is one of the major reasons I came to Michigan was to study these vulnerabilities and hardware components that are not protected by traditional software means. Accelerometers and other motion sensors are found in consumer devices such as smartphones, Fitbits, smartwatches. Sensors are designed to measure specific environmental signals. What we look at in my lab is, well, why are those readings considered trustworthy? And how could an adversary actually change those settings to cause harm? So uh, that is, uh, let's see. Yeah. That's the second part of the club I pulled out. In the laboratory, what Tim does is he creates an automatic system to deliver sound waves at different frequencies to different sensors. And he's able to measure for each sensor their susceptibility to this malicious acoustic interference. To demonstrate this, 
I attack a MEMS accelerometer in a smartphone that is running an application that steers an RC car. In another demonstration, I show how it is possible to spoof thousands of steps on a Fitbit without ever taking a single step. We were able to not only disable systems with acceleration sensors, but we could control their output in a way that would alter the behavior of systems that use these devices by applying a specially crafted acoustic signal to a vulnerable MEMS accelerometer. I can achieve a desired output waveform from the sensor. For instance, I demonstrate spelling out the word walnut from the output signal of an accelerometer by using only the acoustic interference. Yeah, so that type of attack essentially is what uh, was happening with the, the MAX-8, uh, potentially. You know, we don't know for a fact, and the public doesn't always get told everything, but uh, it's a real risk if someone's messing with the sensors, and there's a variety of ways that could happen. So uh, they, they grounded all the, the planes as they should have. And now um, we're going to move on to um, the F-35, and here's a lead-in for that. I guess we got a pilot at our house and he so said he got a call us Let me go back to the slide right okay. there. Yeah. I guess we got a pilot at our house and he mm -hmm. said he got addicted. This morning, a dramatic 911 call is giving new insight into a $100 million mystery. What caused an F-35 fighter jet to go missing, then crash in rural South Carolina? The pilot ejected and landed in the backyard of a home near North Charleston earlier this week. The stunned homeowner called 911. Sorry, what happened? We got a pilot in the house, and I guess he landed in my backyard, and we are trying to see if we could get a... Um, Ambulance to the house, please. Then the pilot took the phone. How old is the patient? We have a military jet crash. I'm the pilot. We need to get uh, rescue rolling. I'm not sure where the airplane is. That's a crash land somewhere. I plane. ejected. How does a how does an F-35 take this? This morning, a dramatic. Okay, so so Andy. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about what you found related sure. to the after crash? Yeah. In what, September of 2023, correct? Correct. Correct. What happened is, I believe it was on a Sunday, is the F 35B, there's three variants of F 35 jet fighters there's the A, the B, and the C. The A and the C are short and long range takeoff, and the B is the only variant that actually has a vertical takeoff. The B is also only the uh, variant that has an automatic ejector seat um, that's produced by Blake, a UK company of ejector seat manufacturer. What we did was immediately uh, about hearing about this incidentally, we started looking at the three main protagonists, the three main players within the construction of uh, the F-35. Uh, that one was Lockheed Martin, uh, as the first major prime, I guess you'd call them. Then there was Chris Blake, the ejector seat organization. And then there was Green Hills Software, which is GHS, um, the uh, company that make the real-time operating system. What we did as we looked at each one of these in turn, and we found that they had, um, they certainly weren't compliant, let's put it this way, with CMMC, which is the Cyber Maturity Model Certification that the US government demand for all of their suppliers into the military and to the federal uh, organizations. But the CMMC isn't yet enforced. It is still being changed. It's still being messed about with, which is very concerning. But not one of the companies uh, were achieving a good security posture from external threat attacks and digital intrusion. So we put a report together and we shared that within three working days with JFHQ, J3, which is the highest level of um, security clearance for the military. And four months have elapsed now and we've not heard back from that report. I believe I shared a report um, uh, with you yesterday, Lee, which you've had a chance to read, which is um, very, very concerning to say the least. And the fact that the pilot seemingly, uh, it's yet to be confirmed but seemingly was ejected without his will 
and be, bearing in mind it's an F-35B, which was the only one, the only variant that can have an automatic ejector uh, seat um, in play, we suggest that the ejector seat may have been activated from external influence, and we believe that the plane then became a 100 million missile to fortunately crash into North Carolina or wherever it did. Um, but I think it was a bit of a warning sign. Let's just say that. Yeah, it was amazing. Went undetected for a half hour. How do you lose a, a jet like that? Well, you know, I think, yeah. The of the jet might have been enabled. Yeah. Well, again, a lot of people won't realize, but F-35s don't have a black box like a typical flight uh, a, a, a plane. So consequently, they can't even backtrack and find out what went on. It's literally whatever happened, the human element and the human information that's been imparted by the pilot, who, thank goodness, was was uh, survived, if not somewhat shaken up. Well, and then you have to ask, you know, what happened with the satellite tracking systems? Was this a, a attack by Russia masking those signals or interfering so that the the jet could be located? I mean, we don't really know. Um, yeah. I, could you explain to everyone what what TNS is? That net is? Sure, sure. Um, look, a friend of ours invented DNS, domain name systems, back in 83 to 86. Dr. Paul Mokopetris uh, was tasked, and, and he'd be the first to tell you, he got the job because no one else wanted it. Um, okay. His task was to translate human-friendly text into binary numbers for computers to communicate and to share information with. So it took him about three years, and uh, DNS was one of the first ever internet protocols when the IETF was set up, the uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, and it is still in play today. Uh, it was a bit of a stopgap uh, um, at the time, but it's still very, very much in play today. The little screenshot you've got there of Lockheed Martin, that's uh, LockheedMartin.com, that's dated the 17th of January, so it's a live situation. Their DNS is exposed, so... Each of those gray drop downs are different variants of servers. Um, and right. that means that they are insecure. That's as yeah, simple as that. There's no, there's no most way important, nice. Most important that every organization should be doing is they should be looking at their own domain, whether it's a government oh, or absolutely. otherwise. Yeah, if, yeah. if it says if it says com to lockheedmartin.com insecure, that means that the cryptographic signing process. The trust, as it goes from com to lockkeymark.com, yeah. is not correct. And then you have subdomains as well. But these are this is a root domain that is presently yeah, yeah. here. And people, we, people don't understand me. People, yeah. people don't understand. I, I can't remember how many Lockheed Martin subdomains there are, but there are hundreds. And it's but, a little bit. I, also, I used to. Can you, can you help or report and saw at one point in time that they became secure? And they had DNSSEC properly implemented at some point in time? Um, not Lockheed Martin. Some do, some don't. But if you if you subscribe to Cloudflare's view, every company should check these every day. All of their subdomains. I use this analogy. If you had a thousand shops and you had very high value goods in each shop, how many would you lock up each day? You'd want to think yeah. you'd lock up every thousand. So... I don't know why in the digital space organizations, especially at this level, prime contractors to the U.S. government building and getting contracts in the trillions, why they are not taking their security seriously enough and leaving it exposed. There's a reason why there is an F-35 variant made in China, because they stole the blueprints, because they were able to. And the, the serious issue you have here is if there's any subdomain, you know, portal.lockheedmartin.com or anything else where, you know, maintenance crew are downloading firmware or manuals or whatnot, there's a potential yep. for a man in the middle to get in there and manipulate that information and present bad information. So this is yep. something that is just completely unacceptable. In the U.S., Congress needs to act on this. They need to require... For critical infrastructure, so our ad adversaries can't get in the middle and alter firmware updates. Well, look, uh, Lee, let me explain this to you. We strongly suspect when we move on to the FAA in a minute, we strongly suspect, as with uh, Rogers Communications in 2022, that Russia um, took advantage of Rogers Communications' exposed positions and exploited them 
bringing down about 60% of the entire Canadian internet and communications capability because Rogers weren't doing their job very well to protect and secure basic internet connectivity, as we see here, uh, allowing Russia to attack them, uh, an easy attack. Uh, and that's what we've got here. So we think when we move on to the FAA, we we'll see a situation whereby uh, warning shots of shutting down an entire airspace, as well as potentially using an F-35 as a $100 million missile, may have been an external actor taking advantage of exposed positions. Yeah, and no one will ever admit that, so we won't know. Yeah. All, all we know is what we can see as security professionals from the outside, which is that major critical aviation infrastructure are not securing their DNS and they don't even know about it in many cases. Yeah. And that's why it's necessary that, you know, government agencies need to regulate and require DNSSEC audits and critical infrastructure. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, the more recent MAX 9 issue here in a second. The Boeing CEO is saying they made a mistake after a door plug blew off of a 737 MAX 9 plane. He said it at the company's staff-wide safety meeting today. Boeing MAX 9 jets remain grounded, causing more cancellations across the country. And investigators are keying in on the recovered door plug that flew off of Alaska Flight 1282 and asking the question, were the bolts even there to hold it in place? Some major news coming from the National Transportation Safety Board about the now recovered door plug that flew off an Alaska Airlines Boeing MAX 9 at 16,000 feet after takeoff from Portland on Friday. With investigators now confirming the four bolts that prevent the door plug from moving were no longer attached to the plug or the plane. So far, it's unclear if they were ever there. We found that both guide tracks on the plug were fractured. Uh, we have not yet recovered the four bolts uh, that restrain it from its vertical movement. And we have not yet determined if they existed there. That will be determined when we take the plug to our lab in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, both Alaska and United Airlines say they found loose bolts connected to door plugs on other MAX 9 aircraft, something that may give investigators a clue and regulators concerns. For now, all MAX 9 aircraft remain grounded. Yeah, so um, I got one more video here. I'm not convinced that this is... Uh, necessarily specific to Boeing. I think, you know, Boeing's a U.S. company and maybe maybe making an example of them. Uh, but what caused a mid-air blowout of this Boeing 737? What caused a mid-air blowout of this Boeing 737 MAX 9? The focus is on a part of the fuselage called the door plug. It's fitted on planes that don't require the full number of operating emergency exit doors as they fly fewer passengers. And it's the rear left door plug that blew off an Alaska Airlines flight at 16,000 feet, shortly after the aircraft took off from Portland in Oregon. Investigators say the door panel moved upwards before ejecting, and the fitting holding it in place came loose. The door plug itself was found by a member of the public in their garden. Investigators found no discrepancies between that door plug and the identical one on the right side of the aircraft. Now, the two U.S. airlines that operate the MAX 9 model, that's United and Alaska, said their own checks had found loose bolts on the now grounded jets. Investigators are considering expanding their remits to cover other MAX 9 aircraft. The discovery of parts that appear not to have been tightened properly has increased scrutiny on the manufacturing processes at Boeing and its key supplier, Spirit Aerosystems. Yeah, so... Uh... The questions like how did how did this happen? They're investigating right now. Uh, you know, it could have been a problem that happened in the factory with uh, you know Boeing uses a subcontractor who subcontracts out to India for some of the assembly. Um, so they're looking into that. It could be that the bolts were loosened during maintenance, knowingly or unknowingly by maintenance staff. But what we know now that's just come out is that smart wrenches, uh, Bosch uh, smart wrenches, for instance, there's a cyber threat that was published. Uh, ARS Technica has had an article on it in the last week that details how you know firmware updates to these smart wrenches that help automatically adjust the bolt to the right tightness uh, can have their firmware altered so that they don't tighten the bolts properly. So if 
if that proves out to be the source of what's going on here, this is a problem that impacts every major airline, every manufacturer, and it's not Boeing specific. Uh, we don't know yet. It could be a combination of the two, but um, this is where, you know, tell me about, explain how DNSSEC, if you're going to Bosch's website, what could happen and how that could happen to compromise the smart rut, Chandy. Yeah. Um, look, I, I can speak and wax lyrical about torque wrenches because when I used to race cars, we used to have to have torque settings everywhere. And you'd have not only torque settings, but you'd have Loctite um, thread grip. Uh, the reality is if you didn't set the torque, torque right, nuts could come loose. So one hypothesis of these nuts, uh, these bolts being missing is that they were not tightened to the right torque settings became loose and then foot fell out, allowing the door plug to come out. That's a hypothesis, but it's it's quite a valid one because in that news uh, reel that you've just played, Lee, the guy actually says, you know, the bolts weren't there, they were loosened. So there's a bit there. The Bosch scenario is very concerning because what people don't seem to understand is that the perimeter defenses of a, an organization can allow digital intrusion and to manipulate and abuse and tamper with the network, with settings, with various things. So, for example, uh, we're all familiar with the Die Hard movies where they change the landing uh, pattern and they say that the sea level is a different level to the actual ground level and, and the plane crashes into the ground. Silly situations like that can be impacted by changing settings within organizations that people aren't even looking about. So it's imperative that DNS and Internet assets for all companies are checked on a regular basis. And we, we state every day, because when would you like to find out you've been breached or your network has been intruded and adjusted the day of it happening or maybe three years later? Exactly. That's, that's, that's a, reality. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so here's the cybersecurity concerns regarding the Pine Rex Ross Smart Wrench primarily stems from a series of vulnerabilities in its operating system, XOOS. These vulnerabilities, discovered by Nozomi Networks, present significant risks to the tool's operation and, by extension, to the production lines where it's used. The vulnerabilities identified include a range of issues such as improper authorization. SQL injection, path traversal, use of hard-coded credentials, and buffer overflows. These vulnerabilities allow hackers to gain unauthorized access to the device, potentially enabling them to carry out a variety of malicious activities. Two primary attack scenarios have been outlined. Firstly, hackers could deploy ransomware to render the device inoperable, preventing local operators from controlling it and denoting ransom to risk functionality. The second, more concerning scenario involves stealthily altering the tool's configuration, such as changing the torque value settings. This could be particularly dangerous as operators might remain unaware of these changes, leading to improperly fastened components and potential safety hazards. The implications of these vulnerabilities are substantial, especially in industries where precision is critical. For instance, in automotive production lines or other manufacturing sectors, the incorrect torque application due to these vulnerabilities could lead to mechanical failures, safety issues, or even fires in certain situations. This could have far-reaching financial consequences due to production stoppages, recalls, or damage to the manufacturer's reputation. Lock yeah, sir. I mean, this is clearly, this could be a cyber attack on the reputation of the U.S. domestic manufacturing of airplanes, if it proves yeah. out that that's there, or else it's the supply chain problem of the people doing things but that so many airline so many airplanes out there have loose bolts that's a wake-up call and why any software updates are being delivered over insecure insecured domains it's all of them bosch microsoft yeah. Lockheed Martin. I mean, but, but there's get... two important points there because if that plane wasn't at 16,000 feet and it was at 32,000 feet, the mm -hmm. implications would have been far more severe. Yeah. Good and point, then, of Andy. course, for, for anybody that doesn't fully understand how um, domain access, domain and subdomain access, and the changes and the compromises into a system can be impactful, they've only understand how Stuxnet worked. 
and Stuxnet yeah, uh, adjusted the change of the centrifuges and the speed, creating potential yeah. nuclear fallout um, yeah, and, and explosions. Right. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of covert transmission channels that people aren't aware of, like satellite transmission yeah. can be command and control on malware. Um, yeah. I use an older iPhone 11 because it doesn't have the satellite functionality. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but that's something that, like, in doing forensics, I understand that you have less interference from outside forces if you're underground, deep underground. It blocks the mesh signaling. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try to wrap this one up and get us back on some time so you have time to talk about the NOTAM compromise. Yeah. But the big takeaway points here are immediately all the flight attendants, all the ground crew, everyone that works in the airlines, on the planes or on the ground, they need to be aware of this potential threat. They need to inspect visually, use your eyes, talk and say something if you see something. I was talking to my aunt last night, works at one of the airlines, and she was like, oh my, you know, the idea that the wrenches are uh, possibly compromised. What we need short term, and the transportation secretary, Judge should require that smart wrenches immediately cease being used until the FAA's invest or NTSB's investigation is complete. And we need not AI, we need trusted senior mechanics to be inspecting those planes with old fashioned wrenches, uh, not relying on smart technology that may be altered. Uh, yeah. Finally, you know, getting a notice out, the union should be getting a notice out to the members so that they're aware of this potential cyber attack threat vector. Uh, we don't know that that's what happened yet, but there's no need to wait on this and letting people know that are closest to the vehicles, you know, the more human eyes on it, the like the better likelihood of curtailing the threat. And so, uh, uh, I'm going to play this short video, and then Andy's going to share some of We've been tracking the story very closely. We're learning from the FAA. Like, the operations, like you were pointing out, are beginning to resume gradually across the U.S. following that outage. The problem was stemming from the notice-to-air mission system that provides safety into flight crews called NOTAMs. Now, thousands, about 6,000-plus flights have been affected this morning, most of them delayed and some canceled as well as the FAA scrambles to fix this outage. Earlier, the agency had ordered airlines to pause all domestic departures after its pilot alerting system crashed. So basically, if there's cranes in the area, if runways are closed, if taxiways are closed, if they put uh, chemicals on the runway, it's all this important stuff that the pilots need to know before they leave. No time or notice to air missions is a system that FAA describes as giving the real time and abnormal status of U.S. airspace. It contains information that's essential to flight operations. Now, while the White House this morning initially said that there is no evidence of a cyber attack, President Joe Biden said we don't know and told reporters he's directed the Department of Transportation to investigate the cause of this disruption. Aircraft can still land safely. It's not took off right now. We don't know what the cost is, but it's expected to be capable of a couple hours of the distance to get caught with the response shut down. Yeah, so, uh, well, I'll be here. My advance scene seems to require me to get dropped out here for a second. Okay, so, uh, Let's see. So, uh, Andy, uh, who regulates the NOTAM system? I mean, can you explain what it is to everyone sure, briefly? Sure, sure. Um, look, the, the, the little video you just played uh, would have been on the 11th of January 2023, so just over one year ago. FAA stands for the Federal Administration, uh, Federal M A Administration, sorry, um, which regulates the entire U.S. airspace, so everything. So all of the Boeing problems, any problems with flights, with crew, with maintenance, with airplanes, the FAA have overall governance on all of that. It's a, it's a major body. Uh, the FAA look after all of the NOTAM system, which is the Notice to Airmen system, and that's critical. You can't fly without communication with the NOTAM system, period. And the bit that's really, really important that not a lot of people understand is when this happened on the 11th of January, everything was grounded. That includes the U.S. Air Force and potentially Air Force One. 
So the president couldn't fly. Um, and if America was under attack, the U.S. Air Force couldn't fly. OK, so yeah. that's a pretty serious situation. We estimate, uh, my colleague William and I, we estimate around four to eight billion dollars were lost on that day. And what we did, because we're UK based and obviously the FAA are US based, as soon as we got the alerts of this, we're several hours ahead and we started doing some research pretty damn quickly as we've helped the FBI before and other organizations. And we found that the critical NOTAM system and the servers had expired digital certificates. So you'll hear us use the term command control was lost. We strongly suspect, we can't prove it, but we strongly suspect that command control and the servers for the critical FAA NOTAM systems and servers wasn't under their control. And the only way that they could avoid a digital 9-11 was to close the airspace. That's well, a pretty the, serious position. Yeah, and it happened on 9-11, uh, which is when the terrorist attacks happened. And right after it happened in the U.S. restored their system after you know rebooting and flushing. Then it happened in Canada. So if that isn't yeah. a shot over the bow, I sure. don't know what it, it's clearly. And, you know, there's a lot of ways that could happen. Smartphones could be taken over that have the same frequencies to emit. Um, I went to Reddit when this happened and I found a pilot posting. He posted 10 pages of the example of the notice he had there. So imagine it says uh, tornado on the right. Uh, fire truck blocking lane here, avoid garbage jumps on the freeway, blizzard yeah. condition, and just like overwhelming with, uh, you know, lots of misinformation. And that could happen simply by recording all these transmissions and then compromising devices at every airport to play back yeah, yeah. just a mishmash of stuff. Because those systems, sure. they, they don't necessarily have the same security as other systems, but regardless, there are a lot of... And Lee, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. Look, the FAA, uh, Boeing, and the Lockheed Martin, all the companies we've touched on today, there is no way, shape, or form any of them should have any exposed, insecure positions, and yet they are almost systemic. Yeah. We help so NOTAM. We, we help NOTAM. We help the FAA, and we've got emails to thank us for that assistance, but they didn't go anywhere near far enough. And so, the, those, those um, the Boeing flights that crashed, uh, and sadly, again, they were um, the same fleet of planes that crashed with the screws in the back. They killed 364 people. How many people need to die before people take this seriously? We, we're, yeah. we're not hypothesizing with the danger. Yeah. We just can't prove that it's the cause or the root cause but it shouldn't be there in any way, shape, or form. No, agreed. You've, you've, yeah. got, you, you've got two you examples out, there. Yeah, you reached talk, out talk to the FAA. And, you had reached out to the FAA at one time after the the. When did you reach out to the FAA? On the day. Did, on on the day, Lee. What day was that again? On the eleventh of January, twenty twenty three. Are you okay? Are you sure it wasn't twenty twenty two? No, 2023, just okay. over a year ago. But, well, one of the things that I identified by looking at FAA.gov is, you know, that's a root server. You can see here on March 26, they had a proper secure configuration mm -hmm. signing DNS from .gov to subdomain FAA.gov. Yep. It, it was secure. And then on April 4th, it got changed. Yeah. In the early morning, DNS Viz had a record that showed in the you know the wee hours of the morning, yeah, it was configured securely. And then later on it got rolled back. So we have a serious issue here. Our infrastructure yeah, we've got we've got, yeah. rolled we've back got one a lot worse than that. The FAA NOTAM servers were had bogus records and servers. Yeah, but, but this is even more. This is this trumps that because when your root domain becomes insecure. That means any subdomain, nodes, everything, everything else, everything, everything. And yeah. you know, you and I have been shouting at this reporting things to the intelligence services and whatnot. And there's a resistance to want to really engage because the things that we're recommending would also lock down the ability of our own intelligence organizations to collect information. 
but we got to at least identify critical infrastructure and prioritize yeah. that. And yeah. this, because this sat insecure for more than seven months, FAA has been totally insecure and no one's known about it. I sent an email, I think a week ago, the same time I reached out to you and said, we got to do something to get the word out of us. Yeah. Um, and there's been inaction. And what this means, and my, I, I think what we need to have happen is every government agency and every major critical infrastructure provider needs to have quarterly audits of their DNSSEC. And the legislatures in the UK, oh, the US, the allies, they need to pass this legislation because things are sitting insecure and the people don't even know it. And all the devices but, but are Lee, Lee, The challenge we have here with DNS, particularly DNS, if we're going to focus on that, is that the emergency directive by CISA was issued in January 2019, an emergency directive, which is M-19-01, that said every federal agency had to comply and address their DNS. And they had to do it within 10 days. Not one federal agency did. And CISA themselves to this day still have exposed DNS positions, as do the NSA, as do White House, as do many, many other federal agencies. Uh, the like, reason mm -hmm. for that, the reason for that is twofold. One, DNS was seen to be a very, very good way to survey the world. Okay, you've got your touch points everywhere. Everything good and bad relies on DNS. That's the first thing. Yep. Secondly, because of that surveillance capability, people were kept in the dark of its criticality and it never saw the light of day in any faculty or university or college of how to defend DNS, how to secure and protect it because it was so busily being exploited, tampered with and abused by the intelligence agencies for surveillance. No one ever thought what might happen if it turned 180 degrees. That's the that's the world we live in today. And the reality is if DNS is secured when you're Nothing. getting firmware updates for smart wrenches for Nothing is. electronic self-driving vehicles. Think about what could happen if the same type of compromise, if you're getting your Tesla update. And I haven't checked their domain yet, but you know, they should be checking it. Every yeah, well, major we have. Yeah, I'm sure we you have. have. You're not wrong. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep our names out of uh, hitting on individual uh, companies because they need to wake up. They should be, everyone should be checking DNS biz. And if it isn't secure, then you can't just rely on your internal staff to fix a problem or your current vendors. You, you can't rely on them. You need to. You've got the additional challenge, Lee, as you rightly say, look, it's not just companies, it's up and down stream, it's third party supply chains. So if yes. company A supplies B, who supplies C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth, anywhere in that chain, if that's broken and command control is lost, it can flow upstream and downstream. It's a really big problem, but yes. someone has to make a stand. And the FAA, for example, that have got millions of passengers of lives at risk really, really should not be ignoring this situation. As we as we told them back in January last year, um, they thanked us for it, but then they just didn't go far enough, anywhere near far enough. Yeah, so th this is a slide. This is the day when at 2.30 p.m. UTC mm -hmm. time, that's your time, <laughs> DNS Viz reported that gov.faa.gov uh, DNS sex signing broke yeah. early in the morning there was a record when I checked this up I emailed it in my report yeah. to the FAA and mm -hmm. to CISA never got a response no one followed up they probably didn't even get the email but that's, yeah. that's a problem everyone wants you to submit vulnerabilities via their website but if you're submitting the types of things we're it's talking about yeah, it's it does breakdown. not make it true it gets blocked just for our audience, Lee, let me just run through those because they might not know what DNS Viz is. Um, you've got the three drop downs there in the gray. You've got Insecure 4. The MX stands for Mail Exchange. The NS stands for Name Service. SOA stands for Start of Authority. And TXT is All Other Messaging. Okay. Yeah. And so on and so forth. These are all server types that are doing certain jobs within the chain and they're breaking down. 
So, so in any way, like shape, or form, man in the middle attack can occur. Like yeah. the, the Amex of the yeah. email, so that's insecure. They can compromise and monitor the email. They can alter oh, it. Absolutely. They can it. Lee, we had this cool. conversation with we had this conversation with ICANN recently, where the guy said we're focusing on on um, ransomware and we're focusing on phishing emails. And we explained to him that that's all well and good, but if the DNS is compromised and the MX records and servers are compromised, that's how phishing attacks occur. Yep. And so, you know, I tried to put, put together some, you know, call to actions here. Yep. So we don't want to overwhelm everyone. We want to get to Q&A. Uh, we're uh, running probably about four or five minutes late. But uh, I really believe and tell me if you agree that, you know, short term executive orders need to go back by the heads of government requiring any supply chain related aviation, you know, from the FAA all the way down through the supply chain, they must, absolutely must ensure that DNSSEC records are properly configured. Would you agree? I'd agree, but even more, I'd say not just an executive order or an emergency directive, but to actually make sure they're enforced and penalized if they're not. Exactly. And then second, they need to require quarterly audits because like the, the issue on the prior side, FAA has sat insecure. Look, it says 10 months, 10 months. Yep. How does it go by for 10 months? But mm. no one identified it. So we have a lack of the ability uh, in government today to detect this stuff. And none of the antivirus products or any of that stuff is going to do things about it. Yep. It's it's experienced cyber auditors that, that understand this stuff. And there's nuances, and I'm not going to get into the different signing algorithms or cryptography. But this mm. is a, a very basic thing. When FAA was secure 10 months ago, and now it isn't, Inquiry yeah. needs to be launched. Congress yeah. needs to have special investigation. I agree that's a good stance and, and a good starting position, but we want to see it more free, even, yeah. even and, daily. And, 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 well, I agree, but you know, quarterly would be better than nothing. Uh, but notice needs to be provided Absolutely. immediately. And I'm going to reach out to some of the unions. I'm going to tell them to watch the video. Uh, but they need to know. Like I, I spoke to my aunt last night. She wasn't even yeah. aware She's a flight attendant. She wasn't aware about the potential of the bolts being messed with by smart wrenches that are, you know, compromised. So if the crew know to look, do you see any loose bolts? Visually inspect the plane. The maintenance crew need to know this. This can't sit quiet as a government secret for many months. It's so imperative. There's legal, Lee, there's legal implications there, too, because if you've got a maintenance crew that do the bolts and the bolt door falls out and there are, there are people that die, they could be charged with manslaughter. Yep. So there, there, there are serious implications. And all, all these uh, planes that didn't require the number of doors that were installed, where they, they covered them up like that, every one of the planes before they go back into the air, they need to remove the doors. They need to manually check you know, the bolts. Yep. And, and a person that's a senior mechanic, I trust a lot more than some electronic smart sure. wrench. So sure. short term, they need to get the word out on that. Yeah. The FAA needs to finish their investigation. I'm not convinced that it's a smart meter, you know, compromise, but it's a potential. And when you look at the landscape, you need to assess the risk and identify. And fortunately, they have done some audits. They found loose bolts, but they need to be aware of that in short term. Stop using the smart wrenches and have every yeah. plane inspected before it's green lighted. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, the FAA.gov, they. Secretary Buttigieg has to launch an investigation into this. Uh, NTSB needs to launch an investigation. What happened on April 4th that caused that? Who requested the change? Why was it not caught? You know, these are important questions that show the breakdown. Yep. And fortunately, we didn't have massive loss of life, but this needs to get on. And is it not seven months? Well, it's ten Lee, months. It's no question about that. Look, just look at the report we did for the F thirty five B that grounded. You know, that the, the hit the ground and ejected the pilot. Not one of those three organisations actually have strong internet assets, let alone DNS. So all of yeah. them are exposed and compromisable. Yeah, I'm going to add what you said and implement uh, stiff fines for the number of days non-compliant. What do you think of that, Mark? 
Yeah, yeah. But because you know, the longer it goes on, the bigger the threat. Yeah. And so um with that, uh we got our emails up here. We want to try to, you know, see if there's any questions out there. Um uh, if anyone there has a question, feel free to post it. Uh let me see. I don't have any questions right now. We we covered um, it well. That's good. Bill, would you, Bill Slater, I uh, worked with uh, Andy on some of the research with the F-35 and his former Air Fares. Uh, Bill, would you like to say anything? Let's see. <laughs> you can never know if he's going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you got a yeah, speaking well, part, I, William. Yeah, well, well he, he may have walked away from the computer, but... Uh, how are we on time right now? I think we're... Yeah, we're good. We've but look, we're minutes. open to any questions, Lee. If anyone wants to email us and ask us questions. But at the end of the day, what we, we are not hypothesizing this is a, an area of critical importance. It is an area of critical importance. Yeah, Period. and uh, it, it's something that needs to be addressed. And, you know, I appreciate... You speaking out on this, you know, I, I'm not feeling too hot today, but this is so important that I didn't think it could wait for us to get something out there because, you know, not the sure. email may not be getting through. So uh, we're going to post this up if, uh, you know, after we had a chance just to check it to make sure there's no problems there, we'll post it out, share it so people who missed it can see parts of it. And we hope that other people will share it because the word really needs to get out on us. People need to understand this. So that uh, it, needs we swell. it needs a swell because, as, as I say, it's a critical importance. It's not just a nice to have. It's a necessity. Yeah. And, and it's not just Boeing here. These type of attacks, like the attacks on MEMS sensors, how many other air, airlines deploy those sensors? Um, so the threat landscapes there. And just because Boeing's getting pounded does not mean this is a Boeing specific problem. And, you know, the investigators have to complete their investigation because either it's happening in the manufacturing process or it's happening when maintenance is being performed knowingly by bad actors or it's happening by maintenance staff that don't understand that their smart wrenches are not sure. using a torque to tighten the bolts. But this yeah. is something that there's no need for this to, to be delayed because... We, just you know another day of the faa being insecure we could have a much much greater impact than what we had on 9 11 from uh 2020 2001 uh, uh and i think uh yeah i bill here uh i see you're trying to to add something let me check here uh, i made you panelists uh I'm gonna test your. Uh, did you have a question? If you can't, uh, if you can't, you type the question, video. William. If you wish, then we can answer that or touch on it. And then I think we need to call it a, a time. Yeah, there, there you are, Bill. Hey, Bill. Uh, can you tell people who you are and what you've done? Can't your hear. audio is working. Well, I'm sorry about that, Bill. We're we're gonna wrap up because the audio isn't working. But uh, if you want to type a question in or a comment, uh, feel free to. But uh, we're we're at our hour mark right now. But I thank you, Bill, for your service to the country's former Air Force cyber ops. Uh, he co-authored papers with Andy and myself, and is also very knowledgeable. And uh, with that, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot us emails. Uh, we've got our email addresses up there, Lee at enigmaforensics.com, Andrew Jenkinson at cybersecip.com. Uh, we'll probably do a refinement of this or a future presentation, possibly in person, uh, but there's some other topics we'd like to discover, uh, cover in the future. So if you like this presentation, please follow us on LinkedIn. And when we post out, please reshare the posts. Uh, thanks again, Andy. I appreciate your time and participation.
We thank you all thank for attending. You. Thank you all very much. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.